And we are back. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining, you are on time for the first conversation of the day. And today we start with matters health. Today, and we want to explore uh, the area of mental health. How exactly do you do you you know how exactly do you vent how exactly do you express yourself for some it's hard to get therapy or you know uh, get the counseling services you don't want to speak to a therapist but there's an option that uh, one company that is called we listen hub is giving people and that's a virtual best friend so today we want to talk about the virtual best friend and for this particular conversation i am joined by the founder and ceo of we listen hub also a mental health advocate she goes by the name charity warimo charity most Hi. welcome thank you thank you thank you very much glad to have you with us nice to be here Okay, okay, so uh, I know I've already introduced you, but if you want to tell us more about yourself and uh, what exactly you're doing uh, so that people can understand. All right. My name is Charity, mm -hmm. and um, I'm the CEO and founder of We Listen Hub, which is what you said, a virtual best friend. Mm -hmm. So this is where you come to when you want to unburden yourself, when you want to talk about something that's affecting you, and you don't feel like you can tell the people around you or even tell a therapist. So what you do is just give us a call and vent, talk about what's happening in your life. And when you're done, hang up and go about your day feeling better. That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's quite, quite interesting. I don't know if I've had anything like this before. Maybe it's there, but uh, we're exploring the, the need for an unconventional way to address mental health mm -hmm. because you have to, you have to fight the, the battle from all angles. Okay. So that, that's, that's our aspect, mm -hmm. something that's not structures it's not the, your usual um go to thing but something that also makes you comfortable and leaves you feeling better yeah, yeah. i think sometimes you just want to talk to a stranger maybe you, you know some people feel like uh when you talk to your friend you feel like you're overburdening them and so you prefer keeping it to yourself but now when you have this uh, virtual best friend who doesn't know you and you can just vent and yeah. you you know, <laughs> yeah. you know they are there to listen I think it's a good it's a good thing but before we even get to that and what it is all about the details of it what do you think about the um, mental uh, status of Kenyans in this season I think we are really struggling we're in a really bad place mm -hmm. and um, it's not specifically uh, young people old people it's people of all ages mm -hmm. and um, it happens in the, the rise in the cases that we are seeing now. All things are think all these are things that are affected uh, by a person's mental health. So the victim is affected, the perpetrator is affected. So mental health in, in Kenya, where we are right now, I think, not from an expert level, but from a person mm -hmm. who's living amongst other people, yeah. we are all dealing with one thing or another. Mm -hmm. The only difference is how are you coping with what you're dealing with? Are you just silent and dying by yourself? Or are you just going around and harming others in, um, in a way to make yourself feel better or fill the void? Yeah. Or are you dealing with it by getting professional help, ac acknowledging that this is my problem and this is how I want to deal with it? So that's what sets people apart. But I think we are doing really badly. We need to do better okay. because mm, we're in a bad place. We're in a bad it. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So mental health, can, uh, from what you're saying, it can either, you know, lead you to uh, harm yourself or harm others so yeah. there's need to seek help yes. you know when you're going through something a hard situation yeah. it's very important to seek help and what do you think about um the the policies the environment that has been set do, do our policy makers our leaders you know we were talking with my uh, co-host just a while back mm -hmm. about uh, the backlash that our women rep received, you mm -hmm. know, during the protest that happened on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Do you think that our leaders are doing enough to to ensure that, you know, mental health is taken care of? That uh, we have policies, that we have laws that that um, help deal with this situation. That's quite an interesting question, but they may not be doing enough. But my question will be, are you doing enough as a person? Mm -hmm. So before you even point to others, I know our leaders are not doing enough in various, as various aspects, not just mental health. Mm -hmm. And the policies may not be there um, or where we want them to be. But my question will be, what are you doing as a person? Mm -hmm. Because you see, um, you may affect, we may be best friends. 
But when you show up here and I'm like, oh, I don't think that hair suits you. <laughs> and you're feeling your best. What does that say about how does it affect you? So before we even say what are the leaders doing, what are other people doing, what are you doing as a person to either fan the fire or put out the flames? Mm -hmm. What are you doing as a person? Mm -hmm. Because I will say for myself, even remove we listen from the equation, I know I have mm -hmm. been a mental health advocate mm -hmm. um, in various spaces for young people, for young adults in high schools. I know I'm doing that. So bringing we listen to the equation, I'm providing a space where you, as Stephanie, you can come to before you can tell anyone else who you feel cannot handle what you want to say. Okay. So yes, they're not doing enough. Yes, we still have a long way to go. But mm -hmm. again, what are you doing as a person in your own personal space that helps or takes away from your mental health or other people's mental health? That will be the better question. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a great one. Yeah. How, you know, how you've put it. So now tell us about We Listen. I know you're not a counselor by profession or a yeah. therapist because this is an unconventional way. Yeah, yeah. So get us into it. What exactly happens? Um, the easiest way to explain this, I'll use you as an example. Yeah. You've had a rough day at work and you get home and you feel you don't want to eat, don't want to shower, you can't do anything, you feel like your head is explo exploding. So what you can do is uh, call we listen. Mm -hmm. So what, you have the option of booking an appointment, but now in your situation it's there and then. You're in trouble there and then you're feeling like, I may not even be able to get through this night, mm -hmm. so what do I do? For some reason you have heard about we listen. Mm -hmm. So now you just call the number and say, my name is Stephanie. You can choose to say you're Stephanie, you're telling me you're Mary, or even hide your number. You have the option of... Staying anonymous. Uh -huh. So call us and then talk about your day. Just say, I, um, I'm going through this and this. Then I, I or whoever, whoever is on the other end will listen to what you're going through. We'll hold space. We're not giving you advice. We're just creating a space where you can be heard. Because most times, what people want is just to be heard. Not those people who are talking over you and telling me, ah, sorry, aki wa, no, aki utadu, what? <laughs> not those ones. Those ones okay. for, I hear you. How are you feeling? <laughs> How is it making you feel in this moment? <laughs> so you see... It, it helps, it triggers the right question. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and in most times, in, I'd say in the success rate for what we do, I'd say 90% 90, 90 of it, you will live there feeling better because most times you just want someone to hear you and you can be able to organize your thoughts mm -hmm. or just say something uh, that is deep down that you cannot tell anyone else. Okay. So now after you hang up, you'll probably feel better and have a good night's sleep. So the next time you anticipate a bad day, now you can schedule Work. your meltdown in advance. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, this day, yeah. I, I don't see it going too well. Let me just book yeah. my appointment. Yeah, so let me just book my appointment for now. So like, hi, I want to book an appointment for 9 p.m. So now yeah. this time around when you get home, you're feeling at least you have a landing zone, a soft landing, <laughs> where you can just call and know this one will hear me out. They won't ask me, aren't you a Christian? Ah. But usually say this and this. I'll be like, okay, and how are you feeling? How are you dealing with it? And then you can speak. It's, it's a very soft landing. That's how I'd say it. Okay. It's a very soft landing. All right. Yeah. So people just speak. For how, how long can you speak for? Because, you know, some people would want to go on for hours and hours. You know, others for minutes and that they're okay. So how, how, how is it like? I'd say for me, being on phone is, uh, is if, if, if there was something that like um, a talent, mm. I can speak on phone for hours. <laughs> so now what happens is um, how long can the client be on phone? Because myself, I have handled conversations with my friends mm -hmm. as I held space for them. Even before these three hour phone call conversations as I listen and you just react with you, oh my God, wow, what, what, what? and then did what, <laughs> and then that, oh, you did well there, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very, so for me, I can handle, and what we've done with the other listeners is we found a team of people who can do the same, so there's no point along the way where I lose concentration, or the other listeners, we lose concentration, and they can no longer, they can listen, but they, can, they cannot hear what you're saying, okay, so as long as the client can do it, as long as their appointment allows, then we're good. Okay, yeah. so as long as, you know, it depends, totally depends yeah. with the client. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you, how did you get to, to this? How did the idea come about? I think it was always in the back of my mind and I, I have been doing these before even we listen. So I'd find myself as the go-to person for everyone around me. Ah. So one would be going through something like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I need to talk, oh, this person, oh, this man, oh, this job. Mm -hmm. And then I started noticing even in circles that I, like mm -hmm. a strange place. 
I'm, I'm at a hotel, I'm at a club, and someone will just come say hi. Hmm. In a few minutes, we are at it, and by the time we are leaving there, 45 minutes later, I know you, d and we'll never They've meet again. Vented. We've not exchanged numbers. You've just vented. But then I'm like, hey, thank you so much. Cheers. So I realized, oh, wow, it's not just my friends. Mm -hmm. it's, it's happening everywhere else. And then I realized, I am that person for everyone else. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh -huh. But when I was going through it, I didn't have someone who would hold space for me the way I hold space for others. others. Uh -huh. So I realized there must be other people like me who will hold space for everyone, but, but no there's no one anyone. to hold space for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that means when they are going through something, they have nowhere to go because if you're best friends and you always come to me, and then I come to you, then you're like, ah, yeah. Sasa <laughs> now what happens to me? Emma, you'll be fine. You're strong. You understand? <laughs> You're the strong one. So I started to realize there is the need for that, an unconventional way to handle mental health. And again, not everyone. We are getting there to accepting therapy mm -hmm. um, as a form of help, but not everyone is there yet. So what do we do for these people before they get there yet? Do they continue dying in silence and hurting? So what can we do for them before they get there? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. That's how it came about. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, th I think that's just how you discover things. You look yeah. around you and like, why me? Like, why is this thing happening? And that's how you get a solution to yeah. it because you found the solution. So for, for you, how does it, or you and the other listeners that you have uh, in your organization, mm -hmm. how do you now... Um, vent out you know because you've said when you 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 are an inlet uh, where do you find your outlets again yeah. because i know with psychology even the counselors themselves need to find someone to speak to at the end of the day because when you get a lot of people and complaints it affects you one way or the other sure. subconsciously so how do you go about that yes yeah, so I, like i said i'm not a professional so now i find a professional to make sure that um i have an outlet for myself because you see i'm taking in Mm -hmm. For most people, even the other listeners, that's that's actually, I don't want to, to, to say the rule, but it's a recommendation because you're taking in a lot. Of course, there are positive stories here and there, mm. but most of what we handle is negative. And at some point, it will weigh you down. So before it gets there, handle a session every week so that you can also ground yourself so that you can be able to handle other Others. people's mm -hmm. um, issues. Okay, yeah. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. So from the sessions that you have, mm -hmm. Uh, I know it's uh, uh, page, it's, confi it's confidential, yeah. uh, but I don't know, is there a major issue that people usually go through that maybe someone can relate to, someone who's wa watching and they think, ah, this is a small problem, I shouldn't even be talking about it. You know, people think that the problems are light, but you actually need to share, it's the small problems that build up over time. Mm -hmm. So from your experience, what are some of the, the issues that people are going through that they need to be talking about? So most of the things that we deal with are friendship breakups, especially for us women. Wow. Friendship breakups. Mm -hmm. Because now you're seeing if you break up as friends and then you tell a third person what happens. Uh -huh. uh, then Come relationships. Mm -hmm. Relationships. And for some reason here in Kenya, <laughs> our jobs are chaotic. So you're finding that at the end of the day, oh, my boss, my colleague, the pressure. So mostly it's relationships, friendships. And jobs. Jobs. And add to that family. Uh -huh. Family, family dynamics, black tax in a tuchapa vizuri. Yeah, so, I wanted so to say black times, tax. <laughs> yeah, so most times you find that those are some, some of the issues that mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. But there's also um, the pressure because of the economy. So mm -hmm. especially for men, because you feel... Do men, do men call? Do yes, men call in? Yes, <laughs> yes, they do. You would think that men will not call to talk about relationship issues, yeah. but they will. Wow. They will. They are called to talk about relationship issues, um, jo uh, economy, money, finan financial situations. Mm -hmm. Because if, if I'm a man and I tell you I'm going through this, you will probably not invite me for your next night out because <laughs> I can't handle the bill. <laughs> if I tell my wife or my partner what happens, something may change. Okay. So most times I, I hold on to that and it's silently killing me. Mm -hmm. So if you call us and talk us, I'm not giving you money. But I'm giving you a place where you can say something that you cannot repeat anywhere else. Yeah. And after that, you're feeling, okay, it's fine. Let's try tomorrow and let's try the next day. <laughs> let's try. Let's keep trying. Mm -hmm. yes. I think it's a, good, a, very, it's, it's a safe space, especially yes. for men, because yes. they're very reserved and, you know, they are, they're not very open to, to talk to about things. And now, uh, because uh, yours is a virtual uh, session, people have virtual sessions. Yes. 
do you at any point uh, on request maybe you know have a one-on-one -on -one meeting or is it standard policy that it's only virtual I would occasionally or if not me some of my other senior listeners would take a face-to-face -face session but it will need to be pre-planned and of course it will cost more because we are factoring in mm -hmm. if you want a face-to-face -face session you're not on the same level as um, someone else so that will cost more it will need pre-planning mm -hmm. because the, the the need for release and as where it is virtually is you're in your house you're throwing up you're crying you're sobbing you don't start thinking about how am I leaving the house to go to a physical session what am I wearing there's oh. traffic so call us in your that tears, particular in your time tears, in your bathroom in whether your you're snot, drunk whether you know it call us call mm -hmm. us and talk to us at your point of need mm -hmm. so occasionally we will take uh, face to face sessions even um, workshops for small groups where now we can mm -hmm. have we can create a space where you can talk mm -hmm. and um, vent but the point of need for we listen is in that moment of need you don't have to think about what shoes umbo zangu ni chafu or uba hakuna sina pesa ya uba there is traffic <laughs> in your point of need there in your then. tears in your vomit in your drunkenness in your snot in your tissues all over in that moment when your voice is breaking and you can't finish a sentence mm -hmm. we hold space for you until you can finish that sentence like hi mm -hmm. i need your help we will hold space until you can finish that one sentence in mm. your point of need okay that's that's the goal of this wow it's so wonderful yeah. and there's no process for that you know for the virtual uh, session you know when you're feeling that you have that heavy feeling in your heart yeah. you just call there and then and you just start and yes. that's that's the process call just them. calling call and, them then and and start, start. yes all right so now what happens is if 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 you're a return client then of course we know how to bill you even after the session yeah. but for a first time client mm -hmm. we, we take the chance and say let's do this and then we believe in the value of what we do okay. so we will know that the payment is coming mm -hmm. and what we do is sometimes we find even friends friends of the organizations partners would say i i have a budget for a few sessions um, let me know when you have a few needy cases okay so that that makes sense for cases wow. we can't pay mm -hmm. and that's also one way you can support a friend mm -hmm. you know your friend is going through it they need the help they are willing but they don't have the financial capacity to even handle 500 shillings for we listen mm -hmm. so just tell them do your sessions whenever and tell them to call me okay that's how you can show up for your friend mm -hmm. when you don't know how you can because you want to show up for them but they can't tell you what you're going through but they want to talk to someone and they don't know where to begin just tell them you just call and call then you'll and ask them to to bill me okay. for your sessions wow i think yeah. it's wonderful yeah. wow that's right <laughs> we're trying to ensure that uh -huh. everyone even if you don't want to sit in you know most some people still think that th sitting in front of a therapy wana kuambia mm. you see but eventually we are getting to a place where it's getting better but before we get there wewe wakuambiwa where can we help you wewe mwenye hutaki kuambiwa what can we how can we help you because you see we don't tell you what to do you no, just no. we don't diagnose you we don't tell you this is what you're dealing with we'll hear you out we'll listen at some point you will say it to yourself and say i think i'm depressed what can i do now then you'll be like aha mm -hmm. we have a professional who can help you with treatment are you open to it yes okay so there you, you have you partnered with uh, those professionals that can now you now you know refer th refer yes. them to or recommend them to? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll send you there, uh, tell you, uh, get in touch with these people, and also give the partners a heads up. We have a release and client coming in, oh. and uh, this is what they are dealing with. Carry on from there. And the best thing about that is, the moment they start, it's easier. If you have been to therapy, the first few sessions are usually tears. <laughs> it's tears like you want to s you want to say something but it's well, so heavy say, yeah. but now because they have cried their tears in we listen so now when they are going to a professional they have somewhere to s they've cried their tears so they're like um this is where we are now so it's calmer it's more mm -hmm. you know it's more zen as compared to where we found them mm -hmm. yes okay mm -hmm. wonderful so what what are some of the successes from from what you've had mm -hmm. what are what are some of the things that give you pleasure and you know like this I started this and this is the right thing that I'm doing so for me it's it's not even the reviews it's when I can tell and it's the same with the other listeners when you speak to them 
when you can tell I got you from zero, like when you called, you were at zero. Mm -hmm. By the end of the session, you are laughing and you're telling me, oh, tomorrow I'm going for this and this. Um, my day tomorrow involves this and this. And I'm like, oh, that for me, it's not even the review, but that moment where I, even without being told, can tell can see the we difference. have gone from zero. Mm. Even if it's not 100, we are at least 80%. You will shower, eat, and sleep then wake up and handle life tomorrow. That for me is a success story. Wow. And then when you come back again and you know that you, this is a place where um, someone will hold space for you without judging you and you will laugh and talk. Do you know we have people who call to review um, what are, TV shows? So oh. you're in your house, you're <laughs> so lonely, you want to call someone and talk to them about love is blind. No. Are you thinking <laughs> now? Who do I call? Who do I tell? My <laughs> girls don't watch, the men don't. So now, and I want to talk to somebody about this. So what do I do? Wow. So just book an appointment. Do you watch love is blind? Whether I watch or not, tell me about it. Let's talk about it. I'm like, okay. I yeah. think this episode is work, but it's okay now. I have night. Let's talk <laughs> on the next <laughs> on the next episode. So it's not just the sad things. You also it's also the good stories. Yes, because sometimes you leave work, it's been bubbly. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the house, it's, it's quiet. Sad because and that you're just silence alone. is so loud, and you don't know where to begin. And the loneliness kicks in. You're thinking, who do I text at this time? Who do I call at this time? Uh -uh. Don't call, call your because virtual best friend and just talk about <laughs> whatever is going on at that moment. Okay, yeah. because sometimes when you have a, a win and you don't have anyone to share with, then of course that also affects you. Yes. So it's not only the bad stuff. Yes. And yes. Wow, okay, yes. interesting. Yes. Because if you, get so pro if you get promoted at work mm -hmm. and you tell your girlfriends what happens, mm -hmm. uh, the next branch, the next uh, date, you're the one handling the bills. <laughs> if you tell your parents, black tax shoots up. <laughs> Should start so immediately. So now you're just thinking, eh, Who do let, I me tell? Just, let me just leave this win the way it is. <laughs> so call us and we'll celebrate. We'll be like, oh my God. Why? If it's a female, we'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> Congratulations. All okay, right. if it's a money, be like, oh, that's nice. That's, that's nice. nice. Mm. How do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Mm. How, how big, how, what is the power of uh, talking to someone? Because someone will someone else doesn't really get the point mm -hmm. why do i need to talk to someone you know someone who has not gone through something or someone who doesn't know the value mm -hmm. of it how important is it to just talk to someone i'd say it's the best thing that you can ever do for yourself and the people around you because talking uh, allows you to mm -hmm. pour yourself out whatever is going in and that's why you find these people mm -hmm. who talk too much not not the nuisances, but people who talk <laughs> a lot about what they are going through, their healing process becomes easier because it's coming out. Mm -hmm. They are not stewing inside. S and it sort of creates a power <laughs> of community. You know that when I'm talking to these people, they will hold space to, for me. Even if it's not we listen, your friends, yeah. you know if you call somebody and said, I need you at this moment, if they cannot show up physically, they'll give you a call and be like, what's up, babe? Talk to me. Mm -hmm. You see? So talking is something that um, everyone should try their best to yeah. pick up, no matter how hard it is. Even for those people who say, oh, me, I don't like talking about my problems, just try. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not, you see, people will talk to themselves. <laughs> just speak it. You're talking to yourself, but you're saying it, so it's not here. Yeah, you... Because if, if, if it stays in your heart, it goes here, and then now things start to become complicated. Mm -hmm. But the moment you speak it, it sort of becomes lighter. Lighter, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, on matters of uh, privacy and data privacy, there's at no point will I find my information out there, you know, when I call in and, and, and whatnot. So how do you ensure this? So the, the one thing that happens, as the CEO, I am the only one who has access to the database of our clients. Oh, okay. So what happens is, even you as a client, if you call and say, I know you're Stephanie, but if you call and say, my name is Maggie, <laughs> I will save you as client Maggie. Maggie, okay. Yes. And because I have the number or a way to reach you, I know who client Maggie is. So the next time you book a session, whether you want to talk to the same listener or a different one, I know who client Maggie is. Not physically, but I know who client Maggie is. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, you will never find you will never find us here talking about oh you know there's this client there's this person let's call them jay uh no you will never find your story anywhere even in hypothetical oh situations situations okay. even whether even whether it's on social media on a podcast even with a friend mm -hmm. the most interesting thing thing is even with the listeners we do not discuss unless it's something that's alarming and needs more because mm -hmm. you see if someone is um dealing with self-harm or things like that then of course 
that's a discussion that needs to be had. But we will not discuss, oh, the client that I had today was going through. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, yeah. okay. So the privacy starts from within before now we even tell you that your story is private, no one will hear it. And how that is proven, I have friends who call we listen, my own personal friend. Mm -hmm. We will have the conversation when we listen. And the next time we hang out, we are not continuing You're not that even talking. That was, we listen, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> if you want to continue that conversation, it's fine. You personally. But I will not bring it and be like, hey, what's going on here now? <laughs> no. That okay. ends there. So when we hang out, we hang it's out. Different. If you want to call, we listen again. We have that conversation. So that conversation stays there. Okay. Not here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. What, what about the charges for those that are interested? So the charges for we listen are affordable because we want to say it's for the person in need. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the most, um, the minimum is 500 shillings. And what happens is the time you call determines the charges. So if you call between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., mm -hmm. that's 500 bob for 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you can talk for one and a half hours, then of course the you math uh, yeah, you changes, add to it. you add to it. Then now from 2 p.m. Um, to 7 p.m., that's 800 shillings for 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So these are for people who have booked an appointment in advance. Right. Then at night, what we call the, the graveyard shift, <laughs> which means the phones are always on. So even if you're calling the graveyard shift, which is from now 7 p.m. till 8 a.m. in the morning, that's 1,000 oh. shillings. Oh. So the most, um, the I don't want to say most expensive, but the highest amount is 1,800 for mm -hmm. 30 to 45 minutes. So this happens when you mm -hmm. make an instant call. So an instant call is in that moment of need, now, now. I'm calling, we listen, now, now. All right. That means we will have to ensure that someone has dropped everything they are doing to handle you. To handle you. And now that's uh, 1800 is for a public holiday or a weekend, because you see everyone has time. Mm -hmm. you, I, I mean, the cli every client has time at that point. So that's 1800 shillings. That's All the right. most, that's the highest. The highest that yes. you charge. But when you've booked an appointment, mm -hmm. 500, 800, 1,000, but depending on what time you're calling. All right. Yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned that the friends of We Listen who actually just sponsor some people. Yeah. So when people, for those that can't afford it, do they express that before and you see if there's a way you can help them? Some do. Some do. And sometimes, excuse me, sometimes they, when they say in advance, we'll let them know that, okay, uh, how long do you want to have or how long do you think you can manage a conversation? Then we let you know we have someone who can cater for this. If not, uh -huh. then some people will say, for now I don't have, but I'll have money in a week. Okay. Then now it's up to us to decide, is it doable, is, is it not doable? Uh, all right. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. That's, that's fair enough. Now, before we finish uh, on, on we listen, there's something that I wanted to ask. I don't know why it's... You know, but yeah, well, we'll get back to it. Okay. Or oh, now, you being a mental health advocate, yes. you speak in uh, in high schools, you speak in primary schools. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that, also. So we realized that um, in high school, dealing from our experiences, are one of the places that um, our mental health took a, a hit, mm -hmm. and we are still suffering for some of the things that happened there. True. So, and with the current trend of performance, high performing, you need to perform nicely, you need to perform, mm -hmm. you need to excel. So we realize the pressure that is in schools and post high school, that high school and these young adults after high school. Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, we do outreaches and create the same, so the same space we create for you virtually, we create for them um, in schools. Mm -hmm. So for example, we go to a high school and create the same space for them, but now physically so that they can talk about what what's happening and now what happens is we ask the teachers please do not ask us for feedback and do not sit in in the sessions so okay, that it's so a it's conversation just between just mm. us and them mm -hmm. and even in cases like those you realize some of them need more than we can offer mm -hmm. so now it's upon us to ask them please ask your parents because you see they're underage ask your parents once you go home to get in touch with us in this number or when you go home get in touch with us with this number and then now we can reach out to the to parents. Parent. Because you see, if they're in high school, mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do without parental consent. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that happens. And workshops where you're dealing with disadvantaged youth. So whole workshops, whole space for them to talk about what's there. You're not offering them money or housing or anything. You're just creating a space for them to share the challenges that they are facing. 
and then now from then you for, for some reason it mm -hmm. becomes easier to face the next day after after you've talked about it mm -hmm. because you realize it's not that big anymore because sometimes something weighs heavily on us before you speak it okay. and then after you speak it you realize it's not that big of a deal it's anymore it's not that big yeah. <laughs> after yeah. all yeah Okay, mm. now remember the question. The question. Okay. Are there for 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 the um, for the virtual space yeah. for the client now? Yeah. Do you have do's and don'ts for for them? Like you know, most of it it's based on the client, the timing. You know, yeah. how however long you want it. You know, if you're venting, if you're crying. But are there do's and, and don'ts that are set for the client that you? The only don't I will say is do not cr cross a moral line. Mm -hmm. You may realize if you're talking to a female or you're female talking to a man, you cannot just start anything sexual, anything disrespectful, uh -huh. insults, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that is the only don't. But anything else, let, we can handle. Mm -hmm. And the moment we realize that something is going different, we haven't had that experience though, okay. but we've discussed that. Then what happens if this happens? Then we'll, we'll very respectfully... Um, decline the call mm -hmm. and even if you don't pay or you haven't paid it's fine because you know um you have to protect your space your energy also as a listener because what happens if now someone is constantly calling with uh, insults, yeah, insults or even sexual advances mm -hmm. so you see that again starts to make you uncomfortable and now it's not you're the one who needs a safe space now not even them yeah yeah exactly yeah. okay i love mm -hmm. that you also mm -hmm. create a safe space so for your listeners. For yourself, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So because they also get to choose what platform uh, they can use to call. So you can call via the usual phone call, uh, WhatsApp voice call, mm -hmm. WhatsApp text. Okay. There's the option of Zoom or Google, but now that one, ha you have to be really vetted because you have to come from a referral of somebody. Right. Because again, that becomes it becomes a bit complicated. <laughs> Because a bit compli complicated. <laughs> we may we may find ourselves shooting from we listen to only fans without knowing it. So oh, well. yeah. So you <laughs> have to you have to make sure that it's very you you vetted the person or you had an interaction before and they're saying I want to show you something, I want to talk about this. Uh -huh, because but that's on video now. Yes, and of again that's also now something that's a premium charge because again mm. video means space all these things yeah, yeah. okay but yeah. you're also coming into my space yes <laughs> now you're coming into my space and i'm holding space for you but now you're also coming into, into my, my space, space. Yes. okay that and makes uh, sense. it allows things to become less complicated because the the veil of being a stranger helps mm -hmm. somebody can talk to you about anything true but now if if we start getting familiar like this you'll start to think what if i bump into you in town and then you ah, recognize yeah. me and start to realize eh, you judge that person <laughs> Yeah, so the veil helps, but occasionally we'll take on those calls. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's fair enough. It's yeah, great. Fair enough. <laughs> we have to better our energy, our space, so that we can give the same to everyone else. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where do you see, uh, where do you see it going? Uh, we listen, Hub. Where mm -hmm. do you see it going? What's your vision for the next, uh, you know, coming years? Our vision is to be, the like, walk around and people will tell me, do you know about we listen? Mm -hmm. Not because of um, TV interviews or things like that, because of the impact we're having. And where we are looking to be is to shift from being remote to a call center where now uh -huh. you can call toll free, but there's a budget for that that's coming from, I won't say, but you know, the pipelines, the collaborations, where what we are working on. Mm -hmm. That's where we are looking to be. So that now you don't just call a few numbers here and there. It's an actual toll center, a call center where you can call and there are several, there are a number, of, a, a number people. of people who now can listen to you just talk. But again, even as a call center, in private, because the next person doesn't need to hear what you're saying. What you're saying. Yes, or what we're talking about. Okay, wonderful. That's where we're going. Wonderful. Yeah. I think it's great. I think I love it. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we, are, we are manifesting and working towards it. Not just manifesting. Manifesting and, and working, working towards it. Yes. Very important. Yes. Yes. All right, as we close off, what do you want people to know? Uh, either on mental, wellness, or anything that you really want to share? And you can look directly to your camera. I know it may sound very cliche, but I'm just, I'm just about to say it's okay not to be okay. Like mm -hmm. when you embrace that, you're able to look for help in whatever form it is. And everyone, everyone around you is going through something. So don't think that just because um, you're dealing with something, the next person is 100% and thriving. If you're crying in public, they are crying in private. So all of you are crying just different years. 
So it's okay not to be okay and reach out for whatever type of support that you feel that you need, not because other people are telling you whatever type of support mm -hmm. that you feel you need. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming up with this brilliant idea Thank you. and for coming on to, to share with us Thank in the show. Thank you very much for having me. All right, yeah. so that has been Charity uh, Wairimo, who is a mental health advocate, also the founder and CEO of We Listen Hub, a virtual uh, listening uh, space, uh, what we've called a virtual best friend. I hope you've taken something from this that you need to speak out. You need to let someone know what you're going through. If you're not comfortable with speaking to your friend, you don't look com comfortable uh, with speaking to a counselor, then you have a stranger who you can speak to, a virtual best friend. Get in touch with them. My name is Stefanietta. We're going to take a short break and then Sakwa will be back with more. Stick with us.